Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Explain This. I'm with the star of the show, Robin Riddle. Robin, what's going on? Not much. How are you? You ready for this one? I am ready. This is going to be a fun one. I love this. Like, this is going to be one of our, uh, I'm predicting this is going to be one of our most popular videos. I really hope so. I think it's going to be. <laughs> and that is because we're in our brand new West Knoxville office on Kingston Pike. You know, if you're on Kingston Pike and you don't see us, then you're doing something wrong, <laughs> even though you should be looking ahead. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, we're in our new office. We're doing our grand opening here in a couple of weeks. And with our new office, we have a brand new machine yeah. that I know you're super stoked about. I love it. And uh, so I'm going to let you kind of introduce it. So we have added a new service with our new machine, the InBody Assessment. Yep. Uh, and I have used InBody for years and years and years. So I'm so glad to finally have it in the practice where I can utilize it for my patients here. So the InBody is a machine that measures our total body composition. And this is awesome for so many reasons because it allows us to optimize and to plan and to track results in relation to our fitness and our weight loss. Mm. So what is composition? Like, what does that mean? All the things. All so the, everything. Water, mass, fat, muscle, all the things. Total body composition. What is your body made up of? So this is not just like, oh, your body for fat percentage is this, your weight is this. This is going way deeper. Super in depth. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And why is that important out of curiosity? Because we can see all the things and know what's changing. Okay. So, you know, if you change your exercise routine and six weeks later, you're so frustrated because the scale hasn't moved at all, mm. the in body is going to show you what's changed. You know what I love about that what? is because, you know, a lot of times we deal with a lot of weight loss here Yes. and a lot of times you can't, you don't see the results on the scale, just like you said, Yeah. but you know, you're still making improvements. And this is something that can kind of show those little wins yes. on, on a, I guess, a shorter time frame. Yes. Keep us motivated. Yep, absolutely. Whenever you see the numbers change in a positive direction, it's like, yes, I am doing something right. Yeah. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. And if the numbers aren't changing the way that we need them to, then we're able to address and be like, okay, like, yes, you're losing weight, but in this weight loss, we're not doing it quite right because you're losing a ton of muscle right. too. Right. We never want to be losing a lot of muscle. A little bit's going to happen if we lose weight quickly, but we want to preserve that muscle as much as we can. And this lets us see down to a numerical pound wise value what we have. Let's go over the in-body. Okay. Let's so I'm going to kind of talk you through a test. Um, so the first thing that we're going to see on the test is looking at intracellular and extracellular water. So this is at the very top of the test. This is um, important because it establishes a baseline for us. And then establishing the baseline for the extracellular water specifically can allow us to detect any kind of swelling or inflammation. Okay. Because we may, we're going to kind of put extra water out into the extracellular. So that extracellular makes means inflammation. It can, it can be triggered by swelling and inflammation. Got it. Yeah. So okay. if we're really over exercising, we could have a lot of inflammation from that. We can actually see that coming up on this. That's interesting. And uh, all the other causes for inflammation too. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Then we go into dry lean mass. So this value is the weight of the protein and mineral content of the body. So an increase in dry lean mass typically means that we've gained muscle. Okay. This is not my favorite number for muscle. I kind of, you know, graze past this one. Then we go to body fat mass. So this is the total of all body fat, both visceral, which is around the organs and subcutaneous. So we're going to get a number in pounds of how much body fat we have. Now you mentioned a word there that I know is bad. I've heard you, Dr. Rogers, Andy, everybody says visceral fat is terrible. Fat, yeah. So this is probably something we're going to be paying attention to. Absolutely. Okay. And we see it in a couple of different places on this test. Okay. Um, visceral fat is that bad fat that sits around the organs. It's the most unhealthy type fat that we have. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then we move into the body composition analysis and body water. So this looks at your extracellular water and your total body water. This allows us to establish what your normal fluid status is. And again, we can detect inflammation. We could detect dehydration if we're, you know, like I've seen this with increased estrogen levels where then guys will start to hold on to water. We can see all of that in these numbers. Does being dehydrated look differently for different people? Like mm -hmm. certain people have to drink more water or take more electrolytes than others? Yep, absolutely. That's, that's really interesting. Yeah. So this number, we like to keep it at, at an average of around 0 0.39, uh, somewhere around there. Okay. 
Uh, then it moves into your weight. It's pretty obvious, total weight. Uh, but then it breaks it down to your skeletal muscle mass. So this is one of my favorite numbers on this. Skeletal muscle skeletal mass. Skeletal muscle mass. This is the total weight of your skeletal muscle. This is the one that whenever we're exercising or we're building muscle, this is where we see that weight and muscle going up. Is there a percentage of what of like your total body weight this should be out of curiosity? Or does that even matter? It, so we, we do look at that. It, it is what our total body weight, our muscle mass, and our fat in comparison to each other. Okay. So there's not a specific number we're going for, but there's a pattern Got that it. we're going for, which we get to see with this test. Okay. Um, then it also tells us body fat mass. This, this is the number in pounds, again, of how much body fat that you have. Okay. What we always want to see happening is skeletal muscle go down or go up, body fat go down. Got it. Okay. Okay. Yep. And so through this test, because like I said, I've used this test for years. I absolutely love it. Um, you know, there was a time that I had really changed things up in the gym, had changed the way that I was eating, doing weigh-ins, weight stayed exactly the same. But I knew better. And I went and redid my in-body and I had gained three pounds of muscle and lost three pounds of fat. So my weight had not changed. I was still steady on my weight, but I had gained three pounds of muscle, which is huge. The scale was tricking you. It was. It was trying to get you to think you weren't doing good. And I was making huge you progress. You were making huge progress. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's, again, just why I love this test. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Super cool. And so then it gives us ranges. So there's little numbers that we can look at and we can compare ourselves to the average. So there's like a little range at the top and it'll compare you at your age, your height and your gender to what an average would be. We want our weight to hit, we want all those numbers to hit around 100%, which means we're at the average. Okay. So if your weight is queuing up and it's at 130%, you're about 30% above average. That tells us we need to bring our weight down. And that would be different than a BMI? It's different than a BMI. Okay. I hate BMI. Okay. We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> <laughs> um, so whenever we're looking at these numbers, the, the weight, the skeletal muscle mass, and the body fat in pounds, it's on a little line together. And this is where we decide what kind of body type we have and what kind of changes we need to make. So first, there is a C body type, which means our weight is high, our muscle is low, our fat is high. That's the order that they're in. So when we draw a little line in between them, it's a C. Got it. If the skeletal muscle mass line is shorter than your weight and your body fat, it is a C-shaped body. We want to increase our skeletal muscle, decrease our body fat. And in this definition of a body type, this can certainly be changed. Yes, Got absolutely. It. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, then we have the I-shaped body type, which means your lines are all very even to each other. So our weight, our skeletal muscle mass, and our body fat mass is all hitting around the same on the percentage lines. Um, people with this body type are typically very healthy in weight, but this gives us areas that we can focus on. We always want our skeletal muscle to be more than our body fat. Okay. So if our lines are all even, we want to drop that body fat line down. Uh, and then the, the ideal type is going to be your D shaped. So this is when your skeletal muscle mass line is longer than your weight line and your body fat. So when you draw a line between them, we're drawing more of a D with these. It makes more sense when you see it on paper, but we want to draw the D. Okay. So the D shaped body type is usually a more athletic body type. So this tends to be the more ideal body compensation. We've got a lot of muscle, we've got less fat, our weight is lower. Uh, even with this being ideal, we can still work on getting everything into the perfect percentages on this. Perfect percentages mean that one to a hundred percent. And okay. if we can be over a hundred percent on skeletal muscle, things like that. So it just gives us ideas of where we can tweak things if we need to. Uh, then we calculate BMI. Like okay. I said, I hate BMI. BMI is not a good or accurate way to track really anything. Um, for men, BMI is super inaccurate because muscle weighs so much more. Right. I never look at this number really. I never focus on this number. The number that we do like is the body fat percentage. Okay. So this body fat percentage puts your weight into context by showing how much of your weight is fat mm -hmm. mass. Tracking these changes is able to tell you what you're actually losing and how you're actually improving your health overall. Tracking the body fat percentage. Bo okay. Got it. Yeah. So I like that a lot better than BMI. Seeing a BMI come down, whatever. If we're seeing body fat percentage come down, that tells us that we're targeting what we actually want to be targeting. And you can 
decrease your body fat percentage by increasing your skeletal mass. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So for men, ideal is like somewhere between 10 to 20% is going to be an ideal range for body fat percentage. For women, that's going to be higher, like right. 15 to 25, 28%. Women just carry more body fat and that's okay. That's healthy. Right. Uh, and then it actually even gives us a segmental lean analysis, which I find very interesting. A segmental lean analysis. I have no clue what that so is. So it's measuring each individual extremity. So right arm, left arm, right leg, left leg, and trunk. So why does that matter? I find this very interesting because when I first started doing this test, I didn't think it was very important. Yeah. Besides like, okay, my right arm is a half pound heavier. I need to you know, make sure I'm lifting with my left arm too <laughs> kind of thing. Um, but it actually can tell us if we are not f developed in the muscles the way that we need to be. Got it. So again, this is where that range comes in. We want to hit at least 100%, meaning we are at the average. And so people that aren't there, number one, sedentary adults, people who have desk jobs, we can actually see that through this test. We can see if the upper body is more developed than the lower body. If our leg segmental lean analysis is not at that 100%, that tells us that our legs are underdeveloped for our size and we need to work on increasing our leg muscles. And that can probably prevent injury. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that makes a Absolutely. ton of sense. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and so that's gonna, yeah, like I said, that's gonna tell us we need to focus on this area. We need to improve our muscle in this area. Yeah. Um, also, people who are like skinny fat uh, is the the term that they like to use. You know, you're at a healthy weight, but you just don't have the muscle that you need, and you don't have it where you need it. Is this the dad bod? A little bit. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> we need that muscle out here. We don't need that weight in here. So the body weight may look fine. But again, that skinny fat, we don't have the muscle that we need. We don't have it where we need it. Right. This helps us see that. And I think a skinny fat, you know, it, there's a lot of visceral fat too. Mm -hmm. Like it could be dangerous fat. Yeah. Interesting. Which this test also then measures our visceral fat levels for yeah. us. So we want a visceral fat level less than 10. Uh, and so it's really nice because we're able to track that as we go along and see that tr that number trending down as well and know that we're losing that unhealthy fat too. How often... Can you see improvement? Is this something that people do monthly, twice a year? Depends on the person. Okay. So when I am really hitting it hard and I'm like, I want to make sure that I'm making the changes and that the diet's on point and that my exercise is right, yep. I may do it every two weeks. Okay. Because you can see changes that quickly. For our general weight loss patients, I usually just do it with each visit, which is usually every three months or so. Okay. And it's an encouragement. And again, you know, if, if things are not changing the way that you think they need to be changing based on the activity that you're doing, that's a great time to check in and see what's happening. Happening. Mm. Now, I know you're you're big on timing for lab levels, mm -hmm. hormones, stuff of that nature. Is tracking something like this important from a timing basis? I know we're eating throughout throughout the yeah. day. What what's your thoughts on that? So personally, I like this test fasted first thing in the morning. Okay. You know, we don't open until nine, so that's not necessarily first first thing in the morning. And I like it done under the same conditions always. So okay. when I do mine, I'm fasted. It's in the morning. I've not gone to the gym that day. Oh, okay. Because that, that will change things as well. Interesting. So if I do this and I've eaten and gone to the gym and eaten again after I went to the gym, right? Uh, you know, I've already gotten two meals in before I even get here and I've lifted that day. My results are not going to be as accurate. Are you, is it like a 12 hour fast? Is it black, uh, black coffee, water only? Or it's just not no as, food? it's not as it's in not depth like as like fasting for labs necessarily. Okay. It's just don't eat a lot of food, drink a lot of water and then come in because that will change your numbers. Some. Okay. Okay. Um, but then the caveat to that being, if you did it under different conditions, the first time, do it under those same conditions every time. Okay. If you came in here after lunch and you had eaten a lunch and you had exercised that morning, then weigh that way every time. Got it. Because that's where our baseline was established. And you kind of recommend that with labs as well too. Just yeah. To, uh, consistency is important. Consistency. Yeah. Sweet. Do it under the same circumstances. I'm so freaking stoked about this. I know. The in body. <laughs> the in body. The in body. We have it here in the brand new West Knoxville location. Uh, anything you want to add to this? This was phenomenal. My yeah. mind's blown by this. Yeah, no, I love it. Um, this is an awesome test to come do. We're able to use it along the way and track how things are going. We're able to advise you on how you can make other changes to really accomplish what you want for your body composition. So awesome test to come by and get it done. So cool. Robin, you explained it. Yep. Guys, she explained it. Y'all named it. 
We'll see you guys next time. Don't go away.